Anxiety um, for me probably started in my late teens, but I wasn't quite convinced or sure that that's what it was. My parents were going through a divorce um, my first year of college, and I just thought of it as normal, you know, grieving, not anything that I had to be real concerned about, that it was situational, and went on to have a lot of amazing things happen in my life. I got married to a wonderful man, and we have two beautiful children together. We were young, just starting out, money was tight. Um, you know, the typical things that you worry about, you know, in a marriage when you're first together. I chalked all that up to being, you know, situational stress. Everybody has it, everybody deals with it. The pivotal point for me, I think, um, two things actually that happened. My grandmother um, was like a second mom to me and she had actually moved up to Virginia with me uh, to help me take care of my children. And two weeks after my daughter was born, she unexpectedly passed away. It was my first really big loss. That was the first time I think my faith really took a big hit, huge hit. And um, again, I started having like, what I did not realize were kind of like panic attack type events. And then pretty close on the heels of my grandmother passing away. But my mom was diagnosed with um, ovarian cancer in April of 2004. And um, that was hard. Um, I just never pictured a life without my mom and I just, you know, I knew for a fact that she was going to beat it. I was very positive throughout her whole journey. Um, it wasn't until after she passed in 2005 that things really kind of, I guess I hit the wall. Um, serious panic attacks where I actually called 911 thinking I was having a heart attack. And I was diagnosed with um, generalized anxiety disorder. I didn't, you know, really appreciate being told that I needed to have medication to get through a day. You know, medication kind of became, I think, the patch that doctors wanted to use with me, and they don't really like to take the time to really sit and talk with you about how you truly feel and maybe what's going on in your life. But eventually, you know, the fear that keeps being brought forth and in, in my case it was brought forth you know it manifested itself in the way that I became fearful of my own body um, after watching my mom suffer and ultimately succumb to a very rare cancer um, I literally became afraid of myself and you know it's like how you know how are you afraid of yourself but I became very fearful of my own body and I kind of became a hypochondriac and I think the those hypochondriac thoughts and those fears eroded my faith and I just became completely engulfed in it to the point where I walked away from church I walked away from my friends some cases my family I felt more secure just kind of being at home alone and drowning in I guess self-pity almost in a way. Um, out of the blue one day I got an email and um, this person said to me, you know, not trying to pressure you in any way or convince you to come back to church. I'm just really honestly, you know, checking in on you because I'm concerned about you. I looked at that email in two ways. One, I was just so grateful that somebody reached out to me, but I was also scared to death of it because it was kind of, you know, kind of like I had to really I couldn't hide anymore because I felt like I really had to respond to this person one way or the other. But I went and met with this very good friend and the first question that I was asked was, you know, so how's all this working out for you? I knew in that very moment that God had not given up on me and God had held my hand the entire journey and that He knew I needed Him, even though I didn't want to admit it, I needed Him to help deal with 
my fear and my grief and my anger. He is what I lean my faith up against. And um, I think my faith has evolved from a circumstantial faith to true faith. Because really true faith to me now <laughs> is being able to withstand the big hits in your life. I think, you know, the first thing that I would tell anybody would be, give it to Him. You know, the first step is admitting you need help. <laughs> so admit it to God. Tell Him that you need Him. He knows you have a problem, but He wants you to come to Him with the problem. I think spending time every day with Him, just to be thankful even for the challenging aspects of your life. We always go, you know, decide we're going to go to a gym to get in better physical health. Well, you need to nurture your spiritual health too. And so I, I kind of look at it as a, a spiritual workout every morning with God that I'm just like really taking care of that side of myself and giving whatever the day may bring, whatever stress, whatever fear. I know I can go to Him with it and He'll change my perspective. I, you know, recently underwent um, a pretty big surgery. Um, this year. I've had some health issues and found out earlier this year that I am BRCA positive, which is um, a gene mutation that people with certain hereditary cancers carry. And I inherited that gene from my mother. The old me, the fear me, the anxiety me would have probably just collapsed on the floor under the weight of my fear and just said, plan my, I would have started planning my funeral and, you know, just all kind of gloom and doom. But this time I had my faith back. I had absolutely 100% no doubt that God was with me through this experience, was going to walk me through this experience. And I walked into the hospital for that surgery with the most amazing calmness, peace. I was even joking about, you know, what I was getting ready to go through. It was just a totally different me. It wasn't any kind of reaction that I would have really thought that I could, you know, have it being told something so serious. Hope and faith definitely go together and fear and faith do not. I learned that as part of kind of my walk with my, with my God through this journey that I needed to be reminded in a visual and a tangible way of His protection. They've, they've seen a lot of wear and tear and they've seen a lot of love, but this is part of my spiritual workout too. And it's part of my calming tools, but I always have visual aid um, with me at all times when I feel a tense moment coming up or you know a fearful situation may come across uh, you know my radar for that day I can always go to my favorite um, verse of all is Romans 8 verse 38 39 it's my go-to because it's the only verse in the Bible that's ever made me truly just weep because of the power in this message. So, um, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is Jesus Christ our Lord. I mean, that's powerful stuff.